Welcome everyone to GamerMeld. Today we've got a gaming benchmark on the 1660 Ti, information on a non-Ti 1660, as well as new information on Navi. But first, check out today's sponsor, MassDrop. They're a group buy website with some amazing deals on gaming hardware. It's free to sign up and they've got new deals all the time. So check that out in the description below. Okay. It's news time, and first up for today, a benchmark from Ashes of the Singularity was found by longtime leaker Tom Episat. As you can see, at 1080p on the high preset, it got a score of 7400, an average overall FPS of 75.6, with the highest average at 88.5 FPS. Unfortunately, Ashes of the Singularity is a heavily CPU-bound game, which is why it's in a good bit of CPU reviews, and from this benchmark, it's not really clear what CPU was used. With that said, Tom Episat quoted a score of 6200 for the 1060, which makes the 1660 Ti 20% faster. Of course, if we look, he's saying that these are laptop GPUs, so it's tough to make a desktop comparison here, but given they're both laptop GPUs, we can likely expect a similar difference between the desktop graphics cards. Unfortunately, when it comes to the 2060, there isn't really a comparison. If we look at the closest comparison, a PC per benchmark with an FPS of 96.8, thinking that it's the normal average, we're looking at an 8 point difference. Really, there's a chance that it could be as good as a 2060, but given the CPU is the main difference here, and when comparing it to laptop GPUs, it's only 20% faster, we're likely looking at 1070 or so performance. Now, given the earlier rumor from video cards on its cut down cores, this likely isn't too far off. And speaking of video cards, they're now reporting on a third 2060 variant. This one is rumored to be called just the 1660, so non-TI variant. And while we don't have the core count or anything along those lines, the non-TI variant is supposedly coming with GDDR5X video RAM instead of the 2060 and 1660 Ti's GDDR6. I will say that hopefully it won't come with less cores than the 1660 Ti, though it's unlikely since the inclusion of GDDR5X probably won't differentiate the two GPUs enough to justify the 1660 Ti's purchase. The real question is really going to come down to price. At 20% faster than a 1060, yet say at the same price, is definitely a step up. But of course, much of this is speculation, but luckily, if this is right, we won't have to wait long to find out since Video Cards is hearing that both cards are expected to release next month. Next up, it looks like AMD's Navi isn't too far away either. Over on the Tony Mac x86 forum, a user somewhat recently discovered code for the upcoming GPUs. Now I say somewhat recently because it was posted back in November, but it's only just now making waves in media outlets. Either way, the code was found in Mojave Mac OS version 14.2, and the code has four different versions listed, Navi 9, 10, 12, and 16. Now, whether these are actual names is tough to say. Some believe it to correlate to the number of compute units, but it could simply be name mangling, which is something used in the C++ programming language. Either way, I think it's pretty clear that Navi isn't too far off. At least it's at a place where we're seeing code crop up, so we'll likely get to see more leaks soon. Lastly for today, we have a final leak by Tom Episak, who shared a supposed chip for AMD's upcoming console APU. From this, we can see it's a Navi 10 GPU, codenamed Gonzala, and comes with what looks like an 8-core CPU clocked at a base frequency of 1.6 GHz. Unfortunately, there's not too much more here, but it's yet another nod to a not-too-distant announcement of both new GPUs and new consoles. Let's just hope they're not twice the price of last gen. <coughs> Look over here! So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Are you excited for Navi or possibly that new 1660 Ti? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, definitely make sure to subscribe. And as always, have a great day.